Hi, I'm Selva Prabhakaran. In this one, let's understand clearly the Bayesian optimization method for hyperparameter tuning. Now, you know, hyperparameter tuning is a key step in machine learning model building, but it can be quite time taking. So, we will understand everything about Bayesian optimization specifically. Okay. But to be clear, let's quickly revise what is hyperparameter tuning in the first place so that everything will make sense and fall in place. This is how a machine learning model building happens. Say you have the features and the variable that you want to predict, X and Y respectively. This you have in your data. The data is split into training data set on which the model will be actually trained. Then you will do the prediction on validation data set, which has not been shown to the model during training, right? So you will do the prediction. So X and Y from the train is passed to the ML model. This is the training process. Okay, you get the predictions on the validation data set, the Y hat. Then you compare the Y hat against the actual Y from the validation data set. From that you compute the error, which is called the validation error, right? We want this error to be as low as possible. In order to achieve that, one of the techniques is we try to see how the model is performing, that is the error. Performance is lower the error, better the performance is. Now, we try to adjust various combinations of the hyperparameters of whichever ML model that we are dealing with. For example, if we are dealing with, say, a random forest algorithm, the hyperparameter could be something like the number of estimators and, say, the max depth, right? And could be other parameters also. Likewise, if you use, say, support vector missions, it could be what kernel you are using, what kernel you are using, what the value of the C parameter is, things like that, right? So for a specific value of these hyperparameters, the error might be lowest. This is what hyperparameter tuning is all about. Now the process of hyperparameter tuning itself is done using the most common method is using what is called the grid search. For example, you have two hyperparameters, hyperparameter one and two, and these are the possible values of hyperparameters one and two on the y axis. Right now, we want to see for various combinations of these hyperparameters what is the model error is. Either the error can be the lowest, or you compute the accuracy of the model and try to reach the maximum accuracy, whichever way, whichever way that you want to do it. So we train the models for all these combinations of both of these parameters and see which is the lowest error. Let's say, okay, this is grid search approach, whereas a random search approaches slightly better than what grid search approaches. That is, we take random values of hyperparameters, both one and two, randomly we pick. Here they are equally spaced usually, typically equally, play, equally spaced or discrete values of hyperparameters. We choose specific values of hyperparameter two also. So it is always a combination of this and this. Whereas here, since we are randomly picking it, these points can be anywhere. This may not be in a grid. Because these points are is, is randomly chosen between hyperparameters 1 and 2, we get the model here gets to see various different values of the hyperparameters, right? So here, let's say the model got to see the hyperparameter value 2, only four different unique values. But see here, you can see the model has seen this value here, this value here, for this parameter, this value here, for this parameter, this value so on and so forth, right? So the model gets to see multiple different values of hyperparameter, both one and two, both two and one here, right? So that is the advantage of random search, okay? The search is more, more variety will be there. However, the problem is both of these approaches are time consuming. In random search, we will never ever get to probably know the lowest value of your hyperparameters. I mean, the, the combination of hyperparameters that is going to give you the lowest value of the errors. Also, the search space when we deal especially with grid search might be limited. For example, we are searching for these three values of hyperparameter one. What if the optimal value lies outside these values, right? That is also a limitation when we deal with both of these approaches. So these are drawbacks, but the biggest drawback with both of these approaches is this. Now, let's say here the red points and the green points are the points that you have hyperparameter 1 and hyperparameter YP2, hyperparameter 2. Now, these points, these reds and these greens 
are the points that the model has already trained on. The whites are yet to be trained. Now we know that the model is performing good in this region and it's not so good in this region. Now with this information, this information is not used both of in both of grid search as well as random search. But if this is the information given to you, what would be the value or what would be the value that you would try for your next iteration? We are more likely to try around this area, isn't it? Because this is green, this is doing well, right? Because this area is doing well, we will try and find out for this particular region for the best possible parameter combination. But we don't take that information account when into account when we are using grid search as well as random search. So this is exactly what Bayesian Bayesian optimization is all about. It tries to make use of the prior information to make the subsequent searches so that we will be able to find the optimal point quite fast. So this is the fundamental idea behind Bayesian optimization. But how does this work? So what we are concerned is about finding the probability of getting a specific model score. Getting a specific model score. This could be model score. This could be a cost function, cost function or sorry, the loss function, loss function like error, some type of an error or it could be accuracy. Right? Accuracy means we want to maximize it. Loss function means we want to minimize it. Error means we want to minimize it. Right? So what is the probability of getting a particular model score given a particular configuration of the hyperparameters. So this is ultimately what we want to find out. But we want to find this. We want to find the configuration that gives the maximum or minimum, depending on the objective, giving the, what is the configuration that gives the maximum model score. But at the same time, we don't have the liberty of trying out all of these iterations, all of these configurations possible, right? The number of iterations or the number of iterations means training here. Each training process is what we refer to as iteration. The number of iterations is something that we want to reduce. So we want to achieve this objective with minimum number of iterations. How do we do this? This essentially boils down into four steps. First, we need a surrogate model. Surrogate model is nothing but the model where we predict the model score or the objective function, whatever we want to call it. So pre predict the objective function given a particular configuration of hyperparameters, right? So we will have a surrogate model. At the same time, we cannot estimate this for all possible combinations or all possible configurations, right? We want to minimize the number of iterations. So we need an acquisition function also. So this acquisition function will guide the search. Guide the search means if you are familiar with the concept of reinforcement learning, if you are familiar with reinforcement learning with the idea behind say multi-arm bandits or not, this is quite similar to that where this acquisition function will have the opportunity to explore, either explore or exploit. Exploit means, what it means is basically we know that these regions are doing well. If we know that these regions are doing well, we will try to, for the next iteration, when it goes for an ex exploit option, it will try to choose data points around this region. Okay, so it will go for data points in this, in this particular zone. That would be exploit. Explore would be, it will try to find out or try to test out data points that is farther away, right? Randomly to choose some other point somewhere in the board and we'll try to explore how the model score turns out to be for a different con configuration. So that's what explore is. So to do this, there are various techniques such as the expected improvement method or the upper confidence bound method. You can use to use as the acquisition function. So this will essentially guide how the model or how the algorithm is searching for the next iterate next configuration of the hyperparameter. So once the next iteration or configuration is chosen, we will use again the surrogate model in this step to evaluate the newly chosen configuration, right? So we will evaluate it, find the score again, score or the objective function again, and then use that newly found information and store it back into the surrogate model again. So this process, that is steps two and three, these will go on until the optimization or objective function does not improve anymore or the number of iterations that the user has set has been achieved. So this is the whole idea behind it. Now if you want to understand simply, right, if you want to understand simply what a surrogate function versus surrogate function versus a acquisition function does is simply say, this is your grid. This is your hyperparameter, hyperparameter grid. Say you have the hyperparameter one and hyperparameter two on the y-axis, all right? Now you have this grid, think of this grid as a map, 
okay this think of this grid as a map where only few data points we have sampled okay we want to trace the lines in this map say you you have a particular country and you want to trace the lines and the lines where the lines are the lines are the points where your objective function the objective function is highest so higher the objective function suppose if it's accuracy we want to maximize it right suppose your objective is increasing the accuracy we want to go in a in a particular route that will reach us to the maximum suppose this is the point where it has the maximum highest accuracy starting somewhere randomly we want to reach this point at the fastest rate right the acquisition function the acquisition function is something that will that will estimate the height of these points okay think of this as a contour okay, you might have seen contour graphs and all where you have say red colors dark red colors wherever the point is very high the the value is very high heat maps kind of thing right and the milder the color becomes the the lower the values are okay, think of it like this so the acquisition point acquisition function will help you estimate the value of the objective function at any given point right likewise the sur okay sorry the surrogate function i'm talking about surrogate function here surrogate function will estimate this objective value and the and the acquisition function acquisition function will decide what route to take in order to reach the optimal point so this is the fundamental idea behind bayesian optimization let's implement this in code okay so we will see couple of implementations of hyperparameter optimization one is using the optuna package the other is using g pi opt so both are good we will see both in this one so for optuna you need to first install pip install optuna and scikit learn all right so once that is done i'll give you the link to the this, this particular data set or this particular notebook in the description please use that link to try to get this and try it out first we will import the packages optuna numpy pandas and from scikit learn we are going to be using the breast cancer data set and we will also use these also all right so basic steps first we will download the data load the data set which is the breast cancer data set we get the x the features and the y form the use train test split to form your x train x validation y train and y validation basic steps now in order to do the hyperparameter optimization we define the objective function this is the key this is the main part where you define what the hyperparameters are so you are passing it into a dictionary okay hyperparameters and what could be the potential values each of these parameters could take okay depending on what the nature of the values are here these are integers so trial dot suggestion okay this trial is the object that we are passing to the objective itself then we will train the train the random forest classifier fit it that is this is the training part itself then get the predicted values and compute the accuracy score and we are returning the accuracy score this is the objective function now once that is done we are ready to create a study that we are using the optuna this is present as a method inside optuna object itself and since we are using accuracy we are setting the direction as maximize okay so the study is created then call study dot optimize the number of trials we are setting as 100 you can increase this number if you have more uh, computation power and patience all right so this is the we are printing out the uh, the number of trials it took the base parameters and the trial value itself so i have already run this code and you can see it has run for about 100 different iterations and at the end you get an accuracy of 0.9649 okay so this is the best performance so once the model is once the training is done the search is done we use the best parameter so from study get the best trial and the parameters from that trial and rebuild this model okay we have to retrain this model using the best parameters and then you can do the prediction also so this is based on the optuna package now similarly if you slightly go down in this notebook we have the grid search cv as well as the random search after this we will implement using gpy opt so this is another package where you can use implement bayesian optimization we are first installing this now import gpy opt and this is implemented on the iris data set same random forest classifier now we load the same steps we load the iris the x and the y then define the objective function again again same same stuff so we are defining the parameters these parameters instead of having it as a dictionary we are estimating we are creating separate objects for the parameters then pass them into the random forest classifier so these values are going directly inside all right then we are computing the score and since we want to minimize it is always going to be minimized here 
we are getting the score and adding a negative to it. So now it's going to be, even though this is an accuracy, we are going to minimize here because this is having a negative sign. So that is done. We set the bounds for the various various hyperparameters. We are defining the bounds and call gpyopt dot methods Bayesian optimization. We pass the objective function bounds and acquisition function type equal to EI expected improvement. You could also try the other options, especially the UCB option, which could also work well. Now, once that is done, we run the optimization then get the best parameters convert to integer values and then you can get the best parameter values. Now once the best parameters values are estimated, we need to sort of rebuild the model again. That is the random forest classifier with the best parameters that we have found out. After building that, you can do the train test split, fit the model and get the best predictions. So this is the code, quite straightforward. Use the link in the description to try this out on your own.